What's cracking, guys? Welcome back to yet again another episode of the Honda Recap. Thank you all for joining me. How you all doing? I think I want to touch a little bit more on last week's topic because I think it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. We kind of went in different directions, but we can hone that in. Let's get in this. What's cracking, guys? Welcome back to yet again another episode of the Honda Rika. Recap, how are you all doing? Make sure you guys, if this is your first time, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up and that bell so you're notified every Monday night at 6 p.m. West Coast time when this airs. What's up to everybody in Premiere right now? I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for joining me another week. It's been a crazy one. Got a lot of stuff going on personally. I got about a month, month and a half before like, you know, huge stuff might be happening, at least in my life and stuff. So I don't know. I got to figure out how I'm going to move things, how I'm going to do a bunch of random crap. Uh, it's intense. <laughs> Not even going to lie, man. Just so much going on all the time. But I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to sit down, happy to talk with you guys, interact and do everything that we do on Monday night. So like I said, I want to jump into last week's. They might be kind of short dealing with like a, you know, 50% battery right here, but I didn't want to miss a day. You know, I wanted to hang out, say what's up, say what's up to you guys in Premiere. Like I said, how are you all doing? What did you guys do this Valentine's Day weekend or this weekend? Did you buy anything new? Did you install anything new? Did you hang out with your car? What's the weather like? Where you're at? How are you doing? Let me know. Let's get in this. Anyways, guys, last week we talked about a few things. You know, do people go from NA to boost out of boredom or is it next steps? What, you know, what's better? I think a lot of people in the comments basically kind of said what they thought was best. And then towards the end, we started talking about a little thing called OEM Plus, which is something I want to talk about a little bit more in this episode. And uh, let's get in this. All right. Starting off, we're going to go with Resto Tuner. We're super hoping for OEM Plus trend to continue and we're happy to help. Awesome. I believe that uh, wholeheartedly. And if you aren't following or looking at Resto Tuner, definitely check them out. They have a lot of really great products. You can find them. They have a website and they're also on Instagram. They create a lot of actual OEM Plus type things. New uh, headlight gaskets, taillight gaskets, well, taillight gaskets, not headlight gaskets, but bolts, new stickers, things for the underhood, just kind of things that you can spruce your car up back to the way it was OEM with that freshness. Resto Tuners, definitely Check those guys out. Prolific Breed, what up, dude? How's it going? 10K so close. It's so true. We're almost at 10K, guys. So hit that thumbs up. Let's spread this spread this channel out to more people. You know what I'm saying? All right, that guy you know at work. I doubt OEM builds will catch on because of the prices for parts are too high. Unless you buy a clean SI or Type R, no other Honda is going to hold its value enough to justify OEM prices. Now... We can talk about this a little bit later too, but I completely understand where you're coming from on that aspect because if you're going to build for OEM Plus, it's almost like you want to start off with something that's going to create value in the end, right? So like in the end, if you wanted a uh, OEM Plus, like a, an EG like CX, that almost was worth it because you know it's the lightest one. So you're like, this will hold value. An SI, obviously, if you bring it all the way back, you will legitimately be like, okay, this is now worth money because I took the care and the time to build this up and now it's like super OEM and that's what someone's going to want in the future, right? Because the value is equal to what somebody wants to pay for it and I don't know how many people are going to be like, I'm really looking for a clean like LX. You know what I'm saying? Kevin S, you should always build for NA first, then boost, brake, suspension, ECU, FBO, fuel cams, fuel cams, valve springs, and then you're at the fork in the road, ITBs or turbo kit. Leave the block stock until you have a full NA setup or a full boost setup, CSS block with pistons and rods. That basically covers it, you know what I'm saying? So when you come down to building for things, it is interesting that a lot of people, and I think this is probably a good way to go too, is bolt-ons are always first because you know you don't have to go inside but as long as you know that in the end everything you bolt on is going to help the motor breathe better at the end game when you finally take things apart and actually start building so i agree with you there man i agree with you there all right automotive anatomy i think that many people are building different for different reasons many people enjoy the boosted life because they experience a car that was boosted i do see few people who go over the itb and boosted setups because they are not as reliable and want to be continued for power the end game for now is E85 all-wheel drive setup. Some people enjoy the NA setup since they are simpler. Uh, awesome content, brother. Do more live sessions. Ah, oh, man, today was literally about to be a live session, but then I was just like, screw it. You know, like, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to record and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the normal, normal thing, you know? But I um, might be doing a lot of live in the, in, the, in the near future, in the near future. There was a lot more of you, but I kind of want to touch a little bit more on oem plus and digging into that the oem plus look is starting to bring a lot of interest to a lot of people 
right off the bat, we can talk about like Tommy F. Yeah, Tommy F. Yeah bought an ITR, Phoenix Yellow ITR, and it's super OEM. He bought it from a guy who put a little work into it, but nothing crazy, took everything apart. And I believe he was a Honda mechanic at the very beginning. Not Tommy, but the guy he bought it from. Um, but with that said, it is super OEM, and obviously we know Tommy FES channel, he's gonna OEM plus everything, zinc the world, you know what I'm saying? And I've been seeing things on Instagram where he may or may not have bought a 92 SI EG hatchback, which is also interesting because, like we just talked about not 30 seconds ago, an SI would literally be the one that you're like, I want to build on this platform, right? Now, what is OEM plus? You can find a super OEM car, you know, someone that, you know, grandma, grandpa drove or even actually responsible adult. We've seen them before. Many years ago, I used to see this super awesome yellow CRX driven by this older woman and she'd always be driving on the freeway. It was an SI. That thing would rip all the way up the freeways and things like that. And I kind of knew like, you know what, if she's had that car since day one and it's still pulling all the way up the freeway, like not even a problem. You know, she like changed lanes, she took off. I saw her all the time when I was making my commute. And I started realizing that there's a good chance that that car was taken care of just superbly. And that's why it can still boogie. You know what I mean? But with that said, you have a couple roads here that I think a lot of people want to take. You can either find a car that needs a little bit of work, but it's fairly complete. You pop the hood, it's not destroyed. Everything else, you're not dealing with rust or dents. And then the thought process, forks in the road right there you know wheels suspension mods all that stuff kick in or you can take the time and start to think to yourself like hey you know what this body looks really good where can i take this you could go and you can look at all the oem rubber that's on the car you know the lower control arms upper control arms ball joints tie rods all the mechanical stuff that's probably been there for like 30 years and you can replace all that whether you want to replace it with new stuff or you want to replace it with oem you also can kind of go a different route oem plus allows you to not be so OEM, but you can go and you can get, you know, PCI stuff if you really want. You know what I mean? If your car can do it. If you want to keep your EG, your EK, or or even your CB7s or, or anything else and you're just kind of like, hey, you know what? I love this car. I don't want to go full race with it, but I want to keep it as reliable and as steady as possible. So that's the OEM plus route. So you could go and get all new poly bushings. You know, you can get the PCI upper control arms. You can get, you know, maybe rear sphericals, but then, then as soon as you go spherical, obviously that's more race. So it's going to get more noisy and it's not so OEM anymore, right? So you could want to back off a little bit and just get new rear bushings, press them into the control arms and go from there. But that's what I mean you can still play around a little bit, right? And I think one thing that a lot of people really don't pursue is the hardware. And when I say hardware, I don't mean Downstar, I don't mean MPC, but I mean actually maybe going to Honda if you want, if that's a route you want to do, obviously, you know, those 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 avenues exist. You can go all MPC, you can go all Downstar, you can go in X, Y, and Z to replace your hardware. You can do the beauty washer way as long as it's secure and it's new. And I feel like that's a big thing that a lot of people miss out. These are 30 year old cars. They've been on the road for 100, 150,000, 200,000 miles and things get rusty. The car may not rust, but the bolts could rust. You know what I mean? After the zinc kind of falls off, then you're just dealing with raw bolts. If nothing's been taken off in a while, those threads are gonna start to bind. So it does help to go through your entire suspension take out all the bolts, clean them up, a little bit of anti-seize, throw them back in. Then at least in your head, you know, okay, when I got the car, just like most people do, you buy the car, you do all the fluids. That way you kind of like reset the mental uh, life of everything fluid-wise in the car to zero, and now it starts with you. Same thing with the bolts. I think that's something that not a lot of people think about, that you could literally either A, go to your hardware store, buy some like grade 10 or 12, as long as you get the right thread pitch and size, which if you go to like Honda Parts Cheap and you actually look, all the things are listed there. You you can do whatever you want to do. You can get some brand new GIS bolts, go to Bolt Depot, go to McMaster Car, order whatever you guys want. Those options are there, but I literally feel like upgrading all of the OEM rubber and the control arms and all the other stuff that makes the car drive and feel like a car that mechanically moves, you could be replacing those things. And I feel like a lot of people start to fall into traps where they go intake, exhaust, headers, um, you, you name it, you know what I mean? And then before you know it, it's like, cool, 
You've added a lot of performance to the car, which is great. We love it. We got the sound. Maybe you fixed up the brakes. Maybe you did the brakes. You know what I mean? But the car's still like super floaty. You know what I mean? Like you change lanes and you, you kind of like you got an extra one of those, you know? Even if it's just a simple lane change, but you got like one more of those things. And it's most likely because your ball joints aren't exactly fully intact. So you're going to get that little wave. You know what I'm saying? So with that said, guys, OEM Plus, I feel like really is the route to head and maybe not 100% but let's not count it out. Maybe OEM Plus is the route to go when you get yourself a new car or you have the car you currently have right now and you're thinking, yo, I put a lot of money in this motor. I put a lot of money into the aftermarket mods, the interior, but you know what? Maybe I should go the other route. Maybe I should address all the rubber and maybe poly bushings that are underneath the car that are actually holding it together. I did a video not that long ago, well, probably a little bit longer now, where I talked about tires. Speaking of, you got to have legitimate tires that goes along with the OEM plus, you know, we could, you know, bundle that all up together because your tires are the only thing that touch the ground. If you're going to have some really, really, really cheap tires and you're just going to go out there in the rain, you know, I pray for you when you're out there taking turns and acting like it's a hot summer day, but you got like super high performance tires and they're bald. You know what I mean? Because they wear a lot different. But like I said, that OEM rubber and those poly bushings are barely holding on. And some of them are barely holding on just because you have a castle nut and maybe, and maybe you've got a pin in there. You know what I mean? And I've, I've, I'm calling myself out too. I've been underneath my car and, and I checked all my castle nuts that I have and I don't, I don't have any pins. I don't have anything. And I'm just like, whoa, this is crazy, you know, and I had to fix that situation. But I think OEM Plus deserves a lot more respect, not so much as a build, but as an actual step in the car building process, whether that's something you want to do or not. I have nothing wrong with getting wheels and tires right out of the gate. I have nothing wrong going with suspension right out of the gate. These are things that you might want to change. But one thing that maybe OEM Plus should be more considered for is the hardware that is holding all this stuff together. Like I said, we're talking 30 to 35 years on these bolts. Some of them are rusted, some of them are seizing. At least even, even in California here on the West Coast, we may not have a lot of rust, but there's a lot of dirt, there's a lot of grime, and if you know, you never know. You never know, you got loose stuff. I've seen people take off bolts. He took out the OEM camber kit in the rear and snapped the bolt right there, right into the body. Why? Probably hasn't been taken out. That's no, that's no knock on him. It's just more so like, these are our cars. These are what we're driving right now. You know, you know, you don't want to even use impacts. Cause man, sometimes I've gone in there with an impact and just blasted stuff, you know? So if you're going to take things off and you know, they haven't been off in a while, probably doing it by hand is best. And if that snaps off by hand, imagine what you could do with an impact. Some might say, sure, sure, sure. But if you hit it with an impact, it would be so jarring. It could have just came out and maybe with the force of your hand, it twisted it wrong, but it's not so much about the impact and the force as much as the like degradation of the hardware. So again, again, I don't want to go too far off the reservation when I talk about this stuff. But like I said, replacing some of the OEM bolts might be something you guys want to consider when you do all of your bushings. I know a lot of people have done that sway bar bushings, everything else that may be creak. Let's bring the cars back to OEM spec quality and then maybe a couple notches. But like I said, it doesn't mean if you really want skunk two camber kit, you can't go out and buy it. That doesn't mean that. You know what I mean? It just means that you are now looking at daily, daily reliability and day over day, let's call it just retention of your like actual conscious driving this car of like, cool, this is together. Now when I change a lane, I don't have that little extra whoopty. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's solid. It's there. It did exactly what you want it to do. And I think once we give OEM and OEM plus a chance as far as a build, I think at some point people will start realizing like, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't want to go all out on this car. You know what I mean? We start to respect the brand of Honda a little bit more where they're like, dang, maybe that's why they sold like five kajillion of these cars that are still on the road because Honda quality was pretty legit. It's pretty legit. And it's also pretty legit that you could go and maybe spend $500 on a beat Honda Civic sedan and still mob with a 1.5 liter automatic because you got it for $400 uh, off the street with a for sale sign. And you're still just whipping it on the back road, praying nothing falls apart. But for some reason, nothing does. Now imagine the quality that went into the bushings and the bolts and everything else that that car needed to be made 30 to 35 years ago is still holding strong. Imagine how much better that would be if you got to feel that car in its current visual condition with a brand new suspension, brand new, not so much bolts, but just 
rubber. You know what I mean? New tie rods, new bushings, new lower control arms, just all this stuff that makes it feel like, dang, this is a brand new car. Anyways, guys, you know what? I'm gonna cap it. I'm gonna cap it right here. Actually, I'm gonna cap it right here, so we can discuss a little bit more on OEM and OEM plus. Now, I believe that a lot of people talked about, hey, this is gonna get expensive because buying OEM parts is actually getting really, really pricey right now. But why is that? Why is that? Because nobody's buying them. Honda's not making them. So what you can find now is going to get more expensive due to supply and demand and the fact that, you know what, once you buy those, you probably don't need to buy them again. So they made as much as they could to support what they had out there. As they saw nobody was buying anymore, they probably figured, and by they, I mean Honda, like, eh, we don't really need to keep making these parts. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about like side moldings and license plate covers and things like that. I'm talking about like just OEM control arms. And now if you want one, what is it, like probably like 300 a set or some crazy thing like that. And you're like, screw that. I can just go buy skunk two lower control arms and it's half the price. And it's like, you could do that. You could do that. And there's nothing wrong with that because you're getting, you know, a billet lower control arm, but brand new bushings. And that just brings the whole car back to life. So like I said, OEM to OEM plus guys, I think it deserves a little bit more respect. And if we drive and we build our cars to OEM, OEM plus spec as a direction, we can do whatever we want after that, knowing that we built a car as satisfactory as it did when it left the dealership and or the assembly line 30 years ago. And now if we want to throw on bolt-ons and start working on the motor, we know that that chassis is solid for probably Probably another 20 years. Unless you went full poly, I think poly kind of degrades a little bit more. Energy suspension is good, but I don't know if it's going to last as long as like rubber and especially the hard rubber that we got back in the day. But like I said, guys, let me know what you guys think. Let me, let's, let's dive into OEM and OEM plus a little bit more. I think a lot of you are really going to like this idea and like this direction, but we also like, you know, the track build and we like the other kind of stuff. But I truly believe that if you get a new car and you go this direction, first and foremost, you save yourself a lot of things later and you'll gain a little bit more enjoyment and maybe you'll surprise yourself. Maybe you'll surprise yourself when you go do a canyon run and all you did was replace bushings. It's amazing to see how those motors can still pull our car if ever as one cohesive platform. Anyways, guys, that's it. That's it for me. All right, guys, that's it for me. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up and that bell so you're notified every Monday night 6 p.m. West Coast time when this airs. Hanging out, talking, talk it, t hanging out, talking topics, going over things on a weekly basis. Thank you to everybody in Premiere right here who has showed up to hang out. I appreciate every single, every single, every single one of you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.